The illustrious Jabba bids you welcome. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. I'm Pete Mitchell. He's Peyton Jones. And this is the Church Planner Podcast. Brought to you by Church Planner Magazine. Hey, Church Planner, this is Pete Mitchell. And this is Peyton Jones. And yes, I did. I did press the record button. (laughs) I'm in charge, baby. Uh, You know, you have the power. (laughs) I got the power. I forgot to even ask you, what's our topic for the day? Well, what's funny is we just got out of another interview and it's like, we can't do this. I feel like it's all been like pent up, you know, like we're just screwing around. So you don't have any sound effects today, do you? No, because I'm right now, I'm out in the backyard, sitting under my beautiful new patio cover on my new outdoor couch in front of my new fire pit, in front of my new, oh, you know what, if I could actually show this I'm just looking at a rain gutter, so it's not as glorious as all that. Look, you know what that is right there? Baby, that is my 43-inch flat screen TV mounted to the outside of my wall. Nice, dude, that's looking really good. You know why? Because that's how I roll. Yeah, baby. That's how you roll. I sit out in my backyard and I watch TV. You need to get a boat next because every church planner should have a friend with a boat. But you know what? Here's the problem with me and boats. I don't like the sun, so I don't want to go out on the water. True. I would just have to sit in my boat in my backyard. But a yacht. If you had a yacht. If I had a yacht, that would be cool. Then we could tour all over, do a mobile podcast. We'd be like pirate radio. Dude, truth of the matter is if I had a yacht, I would live in it at the dock. I would have I would literally have a houseboat. I would be like, this is my home. I could so see you doing Tom Vu seminars, man. Hi, I'm Pete Mitchell. Would you like to learn to make a lot of money? You want to be rich like me? You want to have <laughs> girls like me? Oh, I'm the Tom best. Vu. We've talked about Tom Vu before, but he deserves being talked about again. Well, Late night infomercial in the 80s and 90s. I'd like were, to know, when does he get out of jail? Is he in jail? Well, I know he went to jail. Oh, that's so awesome. He would he would come on and he'd be like these are my toys. <laughs> he totally. Do you want toys dirty. like me? That's, oh I mean, it was, it was so tacky. It was so bad. You know, he, he, he would, he would be on the yacht with like women in bikinis. I mean, it was just, he would predate it obscene rap videos. He'd be like, these are my ladies. But you got to say it with a really bad accent because his accent was way worse than that. Yeah. Where was he from? Was he Vietnamese? Was Vietnam. yeah. I thought he was too. Yeah. That was great. You want to be rich like me? You want to have girls like me? This is my yacht. (laughs) You can have this too if you come to my free seminar. It was the best. We should probably not talk about him anymore. So today's topic. Somebody sent us like YouTube videos of his infomercials after we talked about him last time. Oh, did they really? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. So, so guys, uh, hey, uh, th- sorry, that was an aside. Pete and I entertain ourselves. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. And we're sorry. And uh, this is what we do. We have this, this section called Smack Talk, which we have to confess over the last few weeks has been getting a little bit long. About 35 minutes. That's, you know, that's not good. Part of it's because we didn't talk for a bunch of weeks. And so we had all this pent up angst that we had to get out. <laughs> and I was uh, even. The other part is because, quite frankly, we really enjoy the smack talk. (laughs) We do. And uh, so the topic today is going to be when your church plant all goes wrong. Ooh, dude, I kind of like that. Yeah, when it all goes wrong. That could be good. Which happens a lot. So getting back to the smack talk. Yeah, back to the real stuff. What happened this last week for you? Anything this is new? this is like just so you guys know we got like the 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 brown chocolate cookie and then another brown chocolate cookie and in the middle is the smack talk. <laughs> it's the white creamy center. Dude, Jamie <laughs> bought these cookies. They're like uh, chocolate chip cookie on the outside and brownie on the inside. And so I tried one of them and I didn't really like it. I was like, all right, this is it doesn't do anything for me. And so one night she's coming back to the, we've got a a room that we refer to as the movie room. 
she comes back to the movie room because I'm, you know, watching TV in there. She just put the kids down for bed. And she's coming back with the cooking. She's like, oh, do I need to go get you one? Because it's kind of like one of those things you can't show up in the movie room with food for one person. You got to show up with enough food for both of us, right? And I'm like, no, those are, I actually don't like them. And she was like <laughs> shocked. She was like, I don't, I don't know how to take this. Wait, wait, was this an Oreo cookie? No, 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 it wasn't oh. Oreo. It was... I had some other brand. I mean, it was a good brand, whatever it was. Yeah, just, if it's not like Oreo, it. dude, it's like when Trader Joe's has the JoJo's. I don't eat those. I don't know what the JoJo's is. It's it's their knockoff Oreo cookie. You just can't do it. You know I what I Oreo do like cookie. about Trader Joe's is they got two buck chuck. What's two buck chuck? Wine. <laughs> a two dollar bottle of oh. wine. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is if you find the stingray at the one near us, the girls get lollipops. So there's a find the lollipop game every time. You know, that we're shopping there. I've never heard of that. Yeah, one of my buddies is a, a real wine aficionado. And uh, and he was just going off about how bad Two Buck Chuck is. And, you know, who would ever do that? And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> they got wine for two bucks a bottle? I'm there. <laughs> That's awesome. That that would be real communion wine right there. You know, so, you don't see so, a good Merlot for communion. You see Two Buck Chuck for communion. <laughs> So in my house, like buying chocolate is, is kind of like a, how do I put it? It's like, a, um, is, you know, some people go on dates and we do all that. But, you know, uh, buying chocolate for one another, like buying food we really shouldn't eat for one another is kind of like our love language. And uh, that's how we give and receive love. And uh, so the other night I come out and Andrew is, you know, so basically like when we're in the in the U.K., I bought this Cadbury that had an Oreo in it. it. Had like a layer of Oreo with like the cookie and the cream and then Cadbury chocolate. So if you're listening to this and you live in America and you've just heard what I said, because <laughs> you can't get any. But anyway, so I was over there. But hey, you know what's the, in the bunny? What's in the bunny? <laughs> but, but the struggle's real, man, because I know I've tasted it and I can't get back to it. But it was it was over there. Anyways, I got the rental car. I, I had to fill up with gas or maybe it was the car I borrowed from my buddy. I can't remember. I think it was that. And, and so while I'm, while I'm filling up with gas, I, I see that and it's, it's calling me. It's like, it's got a halo. Oh, there's, there's choirs of angels singing. There's back flipping midgets. You know, I mean, it, everything's happening to, to, I can't say that. Um, back flipping little, little people. people. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. I, I publicly apologize. It's uh, to... Peyton at churchplantermag.com. <laughs> That's where all the hate mail needs to go. Midgets are circus performers. So when I said that, I was saying backflipping. Does that work? Or am I making it worse? I think you you just need to move on. <laughs> nothing <laughs> move to along, see here. Folks. There's nothing to see here. There's blood all over the street, but move along. There's nothing to see, folks. Just go to your houses. So so, anyways, I I, I get this chocolate. Oh, that's a long lead into a very short story. And uh I get home and and I was gonna share it. I was like gonna come in and be like, Hey, babe, I got this chocolate. And, uh, but I stuck in my backpack. And of course, we had just gotten out of the country. I was jet lagged. That's my defense. And, uh, anyways, a few days later, my wife finds it and she's like, What is this? And you <laughs> would have thought, like, she found something really devastating to our marriage. Man, she was like, I can't believe it was all melted. You, you had chocolate, <laughs> Cadbury's even. And you did not share it. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh baby, baby, I, I, no, no, wait, it's not what it looks like. It, it, it was, I, I, I was in the car and I was driving and eating. And it, it doesn't matter. You were driving and eating Cadbury's without me. No, no, no. I stuck it in the pocket. And, and when it went in the pocket, I forgot about it. Cause, you know, I was driving with one hand, I was eating with the other and I stuck it in there. And yeah. So, anyways, last night I come out from putting the kids down and, uh, I come and I see this wrapper. And it's, it's candy from Wales. It's chocolate from Wales. It's this thing called Turkish Delight, right? Now, Turkish Delight is a rose-flavored gel. Like, I don't know how to put it, like a gummy bear, but it's rose-flavored. I, I know it sounds weird, but anyways, they have this bar of it, and they cover it with chocolate. And that thing, man, was like, uh, it was like a gold brick. I actually introduced, we had this conversation. I'm like, how could you? You eat the whole thing and we're in America. And she's like, no, no, I, no, I, I, I but, but it, it was there. I, I didn't think you want any, but, but you didn't ask. 
She goes, I, oh, but I turned you on to this. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting there. We're watching our show. She gets up. She moves. She goes to the secret stash. Oh, See, she no. has a secret stash. Oh, no. So my, my, my guilt manipulation paid off. She pulls it out. She sets it, man. She goes, and these were her exact words. She sets it there and goes, see, I love you. (laughs) (laughs) It's It's just a weird dance we do, man. I think it's funny watching other couples because um, your wife, she's a little spark plug, man. She's a little spark plug. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's funny to me because Jamie and I are so mellow. Like, we just it's just so it's interesting to me to watch other couples and see their interaction and stuff oh yeah she's funny dude my wife is just she's funny as heck man i love the see i love you <laughs> <laughs> yep dude i'm yep. so gonna use that one i'm so see, gonna use that i one. love you dude this is a true story i i don't think i've ever told you this but we had these uh inscriptions put on the inside of our rings when we got married and they were like lines that we had said to each other that became like our lines to each other so at one time i don't remember when it was but we got into a fight on something i couldn't even tell you what it was today this is when we were dating right and so like one of us, now I don't even remember which one of us that said it. It was probably me that said it, but it was like, to end the argument, <laughs> the line was, love me. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's the inscription on the inside of her ring is, love me. Like That's awesome. Like, You're just supposed to do what I tell you to, you know? Because, come on, we're together. And then on the inside of my ring, it said, high five. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> way. Oh, yeah. High five. <laughs> but i now now that it's been you know however long we've been married i don't even remember i don't even remember how long i've been married but i don't remember who said the lines i just remember those are the inscriptions on each of our rings oh my gosh but these were lines that you guys gave to oh, each yeah. other oh yeah oh my so gosh after the that first is time hilarious. the love me line then we started using it like crazy like whenever we'd get into a fight love me <laughs> Who's going to eat okay. the last chocolate? Love me! Give me the last chocolate! <laughs> it's like the best back talk ever, man. I know, though, that it was you that shouted love me in the argument. I think it was. I think it was. It was like, just give in to me. Love you know? me! <laughs> and Jamie sings like, half 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 <laughs> I actually think that's the way it was. I just don't remember. You know, oh, I bet you she remembers exactly what the argument <laughs> was that started the whole thing, but I don't remember. So, Oh, man. That is so funny. Yeah, it's true, though. Jamie's super mellow. She's super, super mellow. Yeah. You know, I, we, we, were out, we were out with you guys at Legoland, and I love the fact that she's, she turns to Luke and goes, you're about to get yelled at in a minute. <laughs> like, oh, no, man. We would have gone straight to yelling. <laughs> No warning. Hey, in fairness, it was probably because you guys were there. All right. Best behavior. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it's it's funny in the house because like this morning, <laughs> the kids were all over us. And, and I, I like look over at Jamie and see my line to her all the time. She hates when I say this. I go, you're the one that wanted two kids. <laughs> you're the one. She goes, shut I up. Said, no. Shut up. <laughs> I said no. I tried to talk you out of this. I did. I did for four years. It didn't work. Now we got two. Are we going for a third, Mitchell? No, we we, we had things taken care of, if you know what I'm saying. Two and through. I'm just saying um, they would have to be adopted at this point. Oh, that's hilarious. Hey, I can help with that. Yeah. I'm good at that. You spent money for your kids. I can't imagine buying this kind of torture. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what we get to say. We get to look at each other and go, remember, we paid for this. We paid a lot for this. <laughs> remember, we paid for you. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's it's funny because when when we went through the process and, you know, my sense of humor is very sick and twisted. I remember looking at my wife and saying, when they're older and they hit teenage years, babe, we can always turn to them in the middle of just an absolute crisis and say, Hey, I paid a lot of money for you. (laughs) (laughs) 
She probably didn't take that as funny as you did, did she? You were dang expensive. No, the wife never thinks things like that are as funny as I do. We, I learned early on when, when we were dating, funny, funny thing. Um, my wife used to clarify what was funny by saying, remember, there are jokes that are funny to you only, and there are jokes that are actually funny. Yeah, but you know what? I've said this before on the podcast. I pretty much seek to make my life as enjoyable as possible. I am, I am looking for what's funny to Pete. Yeah, as evidenced by the podcast. As ev- exactly. I'm, I'm pretty sure we, that's how we found each other. We really don't care what anyone else thinks of the podcast. Like when we get the nasty <laughs> emails like, can you guys cut down on Smack Talk? All that does is make us like bump it up five minutes to the next episode. Well, and and not only that, there are times I'm thinking because you know we we get a pretty good audience for for the podcast, but I think, man, you know, like we were just on with a, a guest who's telling us I have one billion people on my or whatever it was. I remember thinking, yeah, we could probably do that if we. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. Well, he was talking about how many how many he hit. I think we've passed whatever he had. But oh yeah, no, we have because he was talking. At least yeah. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be really disappointed. I'd be like, man, I, I need to go, like, I don't know. I, I got to do, do something else. No, he was saying he had 100,000 downloads of his podcast. And and I was thinking, yeah, we passed that a while ago. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. It wasn't like that. but No, no. But but anyways, I was just thinking, you know, when I, when I hear people, I always think, oh, we could probably do that if we took ourselves more seriously. And then I go, nah. <laughs> Dude, I was, uh, as it's the, re- the goal. The it's reason- not the goal. Yeah, the reason why we don't have as good an audio today and the sound effects is because I'm I'm sitting out in my backyard because I've got construction going on in the rest of my house. So um, <clears throat> the the guy who's doing the uh, construction work, he had me go to this uh, store, like, kind of like a Home Depot, but I guess they got like cheaper stuff there or something. And um, so I had to go in there and buy like, we were having our sliding glass door replaced with French doors. And so he had already gone there he'd found it and he gave me a list of like things to get. So I needed to go pay for it. So I go there and, um, I'm talking and all I do is I just walk up to the customer service counter. Cause I'm like, I, I'm not going to go like pick this stuff out and take it through the, through the line. I mean, I don't even know what this stuff is. Right. So I'm right. talking to the guy, who's uh, working the, the customer service counter. And so he's, you know, ordering the stuff on his computer to have it delivered. And I vox you. So I sent you a voicemail message. I'm like, hey, do we have uh, any recordings tomorrow to do? And, uh, you know, any podcasts or something like that? And so then the guy goes, hey, uh, uh, you got a podcast? And I'm like, yeah, I do. It's uh, for church planners and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, yeah, I got a podcast too. And so we totally like, hit it off and we started talking about like podcasts and he's got his podcast and his is like on hip hop and current events. And, and he does uh, an online radio as well. And, uh, and so we were talking about, you know, the difference between podcast and the online radio and have we ever thought about doing online radio? And I'm like, no, I like podcasts, you know, it's on demand. People can listen to it when they want. And so what was funny is, is uh, he goes, yeah, well, you know, the other thing that, that doesn't really work too well for us in the online radio is uh, like, you have to be really careful with the language you use. <laughs> He's like, that's probably not a problem for your church planner podcast. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, well, no, not the language, but every once in a while we do say something where we're like, ah, got to go edit that out. <laughs> yep. Know? Yep. We sure do. But his, his, sure his was do. about the language. I mean, that was, that was obvious, but uh yeah, so so anyway, I, I, I don't think I have any other good smack talk today. Nor me. And I figured we'd probably get into this because, you know, up until we had, I don't know to this day, because I never look at the at the inner workings, um, the machinations and what people download. But I remember early on we look, hey, what are the ones that people downloaded the most? There were two. Um, our first, I think our first six months, it was when it's time to quit you know, um, or, or when, when you feel like quitting or something like that. And that was really eye opening. And then, and then the next one was of course, when the transgender prostitute walks into the, into the, the ladies room, which was way before all the stuff hit all the controversy hit America. But, um, 
you know, our, uh, I would imagine that this is going to be one of those that church planners are really going to want to talk about and listen to and, and, and mull over because, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal. I mean, when it all goes wrong, um, your church plant. Are, are you moving into the topic? No, but no, no. Why? <laughs> why, why would you say that? Because, uh, we need to, we need to give some mad props. We do. And, you know, we should probably record it, like make a really good one and just record it and play it. Cause I have a true, I have a true Mo give story. Oh, well let's do that. All right. So everyone, this particular episode is brought to you by Mo give. M O G I B. Dot com forward slash church. That's Deutsch. So as you know, and as those of you who've been listening for a while know, right now I'm training some church planners on how to become a consultant. And uh, I'm, I've got a group of five guys. And, and they're doing it. They're doing they're it, yeah. business. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, because I include you in on the, uh, the chat group. Yeah, I, I follow it. Make sure you're not breaking my church planners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Isn't that, isn't that the truth? So, um, so, yeah, a couple of guys have already gotten clients. Uh, in fact, I got I – got, uh, texted or uh, voxed by uh, Travis this morning. And he's like, Hey, I got two great client leads yesterday and I met with them. And do you think these are good clients? Should I go for it? I mean, you know, these guys are making it happen. So I'm really excited for him. And um, so Ruben, who we've <laughs> talked about on the, the podcast before he's in the, uh, the training. So Ruben's like, Hey, I want to, uh, uh, you know, do some of these workshops. You know, how do I set up the registration page? How do I take payment? So I have him send a check in. And so, I, you know, I box him back. And if you haven't used the Voxer app, guys, there's this uh, great feature where it's got a chat group. So I have all the church planners in the chat group so they can hear everyone else ask a question and what the answer is to it. Because that's how you're really going to benefit is to be able to hear not just your own questions, but what are the problems that other guys are running into? What are the answers? Things like that. Right. So. So I Vox Ruben back and I'm like, well, you know, where you're at in business today. I think the easiest thing to do would just be to uh, to set up PayPal, right? To collect uh, payment for the workshops, and I kid you not, Ruben comes on and he's like, "PayPal? Don't you mean MoGive?" <laughs> <laughs> I think PayPal is just a cheap and easy placeholder. <laughs> like, That's awesome. All the guys just started going off in the podcast about the fact that I said use PayPal. I love it, man. Which I, I would it. say this to everyone. Use MoGive if you're a church. But see, this isn't church business. Mm-hmm. And MoGive only takes you on if you're a, a registered 501c3 church. True that. So True that. So they couldn't use it for business. Yeah, but it's fantastic. You know, I get a, a seven-day summary from MoGive in my email. Just gives me a summary of my account automatically in my email every week. What if you want an eight-day summary? Uh, you know, that could be arranged because our customer service is so good, Pete, that I could call up Kent Woodyard and say, hey, Kent, I need such and such. And uh, I would have it in the bag. Of course, I'm a VIP in MoGIF, but uh, I'm just saying. I'm a VIP. <laughs> I'm a VIP. But you you also, trust me, when you join these guys, they'll treat you like a VIP. I have had so many people come back to me and say, I started MoGive. I'm loving it. So give it a try. I dig it, man. I dig it. So, uh, so by the way, guys, if you want to find out more about MoGive, head on over to MOGIV.com forward slash church. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now you can go into your topic. So when it all goes wrong, so uh, here's the deal. Um, let's talk about what can go wrong. Pete, what do what you, I mean, just looking at this topic, what are some things off the top of your head? You've been in a church plant now. You're in a church plant still. Um, wh- what do you see going wrong? What are the, some of the things that you can see going wrong? Well, um, I think there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I think what we also consider going wrong may not actually be going wrong. And what I mean by that is we might have an idea and a vision of what our church is supposed to look like. Like we started this church plant with a certain idea and a certain uh, vision in mind and we get going and God might have a completely different idea of what our church Mm -hmm. needs to look like. 
So we would consider it going wrong, but it may not necessarily be. Um, another going wrong to me uh, that I see a lot is it doesn't become like I was telling this to Jamie the other day. I'm like, you know, I really miss going to Refuge Long Beach because it is such a church plant. And like the church plant we're in right now, it's more of an extension campus than mm. a church plant. And so it's kind of like, okay, well, we've got a lot of people at our big mega church who live over in this area. So let's start a campus over there. And the people who are heading that up, they absolutely want to reach the neighborhood. There's no doubt. But there's a huge difference between, you know, a, a campus church and a church plant. Right. Because the church plant is like you're doing crazy stuff to reach yeah. the community. Right. And um, so I, th I think, you know, uh, I, I'm sure some people would have, you know, I wanted to do a church plant and then how it went wrong is they find out, well, you know, really what we ended up with is just a, a transfer church. You know, we're, we're getting transfer growth. We're not getting conversion growth. Uh, right. So I, I could see that as being a problem. Uh, and by the way, I'm not saying that about, you know, where I'm at. I'm just saying there is a difference because you, you can tell. Yeah. And, and let's, let's look at it this way. I mean, really, um, I, I still think that church planners are thinking size, that, that it's all about size. And, you know, uh, they, they kind of look at success as I have X amount of people. I think every church planner starts off and has this figure in his mind of what he wants to see. Um, could be a hundred, could be 200, could be thousands. And I would say that almost every young church planner, first time church planner I've met, feels that he is a higher capacity leader than he truly is. In other words, he probably thinks I will be the next, you know, Louis Giglio, Andy Stanley. I mean, you could throw out all the Rick Warren or whatever. You know, I know the younger generation coming up, they're like, nah, that's a grandpa. But, but here's the deal. He, you know, every church planner thinks that he's probably higher capacity than what he is. What was interesting for me and really helped me was being broken before I planted. So I didn't care about that. All I cared about was a loss. Mm. So there was a certain contentment in me that if I was reaching the loss, that was success. And, and, and that took a huge burden off. In fact, case in point, I went to um, Wales. I, stop me if I told this story a couple episodes ago uh, when I first got back. But when I was in Wales, it was Barry's church plant. I, I, for some reason, I feel I told it on Jump School Band of Brothers, but I don't know if I told it on the podcast. But stop me if I did. But Barry had his coffee church, and it's going awesome. I mean, people are coming in. Uh, people are coming who don't go to church. He's reaching atheists. Atheists are coming and having these conversations. And uh, God was really, really in this thing. And I remember just sitting there being like, wow. You know, in fact, when I was talking to them about one sows, one, one waters, another reaps. A guy walked up who I used to read the Bible with. And he's still, to this day, he's not, you know, going to church. He's not, as far as I know, uh, converted. But he says he reads his Bible every night. And he prays. And, you know, um, he might he might be. I don't know. But there's no discipleship. There's no, But he walked up right then as I was telling them, hey, you have to let God be God. Don't be a salesman with the gospel. Don't always try to close a sale. Let people, and he walks up and goes, Peyton, is that you? Peyton, is that you? And then he starts telling me, hey, I still have the Bible you gave me. I read through John's gospel like you told me. And, 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 and so it was just, it was really cool, man, because he knew Barry. Barry was the guy who introduced me to him. And I said, well, I'm here with Barry's group. And it was just a picture of God's sovereignty at work. But anyways, this group is beautiful. And so I tricked them and I said, hey, guys, look around this coffee shop. How could you make this bigger? In other words, there's a bunch of people in this coffee shop. Now, this was a good question, but it was a trick question. But I said, look, how would you look around at all these people outside of this circle right here, but, but enjoying their coffee in the coffee shop? How would you reach? How would you get them into this? And, and, and so I was looking for them, you know, to, to be strategic and start wanting to change things. And I stopped them. Once I could see they're all getting ready to answer, I said, okay, I'm going to stop you there. Because that was a trick question. What you're doing right here, right now is awesome. And it's working. 
what you need to do is you need to multiply this. You don't need to make this into something else. You need to, you need to have about 20 more of these in the city. If you would do that. And then, and then I told him I would have a second tier. I would have a two tiered approach. I would do this. And then I would have maybe a, a, a house. Um, church or something that you could bring once you've built the relationship that you bring them to. Um, cause in Wales, that, that works quite well. Um, we, we, we had a mega church of 120. Now that sounds really laughable, but trust me in Europe, that's a mega church. Mm. And so, uh, unless you're in like London or, you know, but, but that was huge for where we're at. And, uh, but I said, guys, the biggest temptation you're going to have is to try to make this into something else. And this is exactly what this community and the lost people around here need. And so uh, just to say that a lot of times guys feel it's going wrong because they've got something in their mind yeah. that is not, as you said, this is going back to what you said, it's just a long time to get there. It's not what God's called them to. And they're not, they're missing what the Holy Spirit is actually doing because they're still trying to cram their church plant into the model of what's not working for the last 20 years. Yeah. But they're no, still, I, yeah, I, I agree completely because we have like, especially in the Western world, we have a very distinct idea of what church is supposed to look like, how long church is supposed to run. And then you're done, you're done, you know, it's on to the next thing. And uh, you almost can't help but start a church and try and do it that way. Cause that's what you're used to. You know, um, many years ago I was in a, a, a multi-level for, for financial planning. That was actually how I got started in financial planning. And one of the things that they said there, and I, I totally agree with this is, um, the way you, uh, handle your new recruit is the way they're going to handle their new recruit. And so um, what they meant by that was like they had a system for how they wanted you to, you know, bring people in, introduce them to the, you know, the company opportunity, the products that they sold, the financial planning process. But if you went out and did something different and now that guy is supposed to be replicating you, he's going to go out and do what he was shown right. and what was done to him. And so that's where it's really tough for us because that, that happens in all areas of life. So you got a church planner who's, you know, been going to, uh, you know, the Baptist church his whole life. He's like, okay, well, you know, I know how it works. We, we get in, we do some praise music songs. You got to have someone up there with the guitar, right? Got to have that guitar going. And then uh, we're going to do some announcements. Uh, then we're going to have a, uh, you know, a, a preacher come in. They're going to preach for a good half hour and we got to get everyone out of here, you know, at an, at an hour and 10 minutes. Because yeah. to them, like, that's what church is. And, um, and but that, that's our preconceived notion, man. And it's just, I don't know. It's just, yeah. that's the way we see things, but it's not necessarily, like, the coffee shop church, can you guys even do, you can't do music there, can you? No, and that's what I was saying, is you would need to take what, you know, all this stuff. And th this is funny enough, this is exactly what Pillar was. Pillar started out of a, a coffee shop, and I, I think he's taken it. And I told the guys, I said, the number one regret I have about Pillar is that I took it out of Starbucks because we couldn't worship. Had I, had I been able to go back in time, I would have just kept it going as it was, even though it didn't fit anybody's definition of church. And I just would have said, hey, you know, um, let's do worship and all that in homes, which we ended up doing anyways. That became our model. But I forced this amazing move of God into a building on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I did. I mean, you know, I, I can't, you know, I move away and I, I still think what we did was pretty special once we moved it into the, but how much better would it have been if we had just stayed what we were? And stayed this coffee house church. What Barry's done is he's actually he. I think he's anticipated that. Now he wasn't there in the Starbucks. Oh, really? But he, he wasn't there when we started. We we met for a good four or five six months in the Starbucks, and Barry wasn't there. But what we did was um, 
you know, he had heard. And I remember thinking, everyone's going to hear the stories of this. And they're going to they're gonna long for that. And they're going to want that because it, it was exciting. And that's exactly what he's done. And so that was my word to kick back to him was don't change this. But yeah, do the worship, do the prayer, do all that other stuff where you can, you know, in, in, in those venues. That's the place to do that. So interesting, man. Interesting. So let's talk about when it actually goes wrong, as in, um, you know, like a, um, what do you call it? Um, let, let's talk about the ways that it can go wrong. And when I mean go wrong, when it all goes wrong, I mean when you feel like this thing is failing. I I have completely failed or, and, and that might not be the end of your church plan. The reason I say that is yesterday, my wife was meeting with um, one of the church planners that we train here, um, was meeting with her wife. Yeah, his wife. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's, it's, that sounded wrong, didn't it? He's meeting with that church, you know, her wife, um, meeting with the church planner's wife. And what happened was um, she was she was telling my wife, she goes, because this church plan is awesome. In fact, everybody who's on my my team here uh, locally um, that, you know, I have like a, a team with New Breed who works locally here. Um, particularly as I've moved, uh, on to work for Nam, I do very little with new breed as far as like, uh, uh, hands-on stuff. I'm still the founder. I still come up with some content, but, um, but anyways, I've got this team. They're all going to his church because it's so fantastic. And he came through the train station, uh, in 2015 and 16. And so he was, um, his church is so good, but the, the, one of the reasons is when he first planted it. Um, it was a wreck. They were all infighting. People had come from the mothership and, uh, you know, people were coming out of the woodwork with agendas and they were trying to, um, make it into their thing and everybody's just fighting. And his wife was miserable. She hated going to church. People were attacking him. People were attacking her. And she just looked at him one day and said, you know, uh, we can't sustain a church plant like this. Um, we, we got to stop it. And he goes, well, I still feel we're called to do it, but let's just, let's just pray. And so they, they shut the whole, they stopped their meetings. They stopped everything. And all they did was get together and pray. And they did that for like two months. And they just literally handed the whole thing back over to Jesus. And that they, they, they found their Jesus is the senior pastor deal. And, um, so what's, what's happening is, and it, they're a team leadership. It's all church zero, ching, and uh, you know you train guys. That's that's going to come out of it, right? But uh, but the deal is is that now it's the sweetest thing, and they're meeting in home. So they are right now. They're just a house church, but they're growing like crazy. Um, they've got a, a <laughs> they've got a multi millionaire um, in Encinitas who lets them use their house, their mansion overlooking the cliffs, and the bluff and the ocean. And uh, they, it's massive. So they meet in there. Hmm. Uh, and then weeks that, that they can't meet there. In fact, as far as I know, that guy's not yet a, a, a full follower of Jesus Christ. You know, he's he's just a dude who's come along and been like, hey, you guys can use my house, you know. And uh, But they're seeing on church come in. They're seeing people saved. And it's just really cool, man. But anyways, they had to shut it completely down. They had to hit the reset button. And so understand that first off, when it all goes wrong, it may be the end. And we've talked about this before, that sometimes you do. Like a, like a business, it's time to shut it down. It's, it's, it's not worth keeping going. Um, but in their case, they felt it was, and they just took it to the Lord and hit the reset. You can hit the reset, or you can fold it, or you can completely revamp it. And so there's different options when it's all going wrong. And I'm going to talk about ways it can go wrong. Then I'm going to talk about what you can do. And so, um, you know, like I said, there's times you pray, there's times you fight, and there's times you fold. And the, the, the fold bit is something you've talked about before as an entrepreneur. And I uh, just want to get your take on that because you've, you've had business startups that just, you just got to put them down, right? You do, and I mean, we've talked about this topic a lot on the podcast, and you know, I, I I still remember like when is it time to quit? Like that episode, 
And the bottom line was, when is it time to quit when you finally given up? And so I think, you know, I think there is a difference between business and church in this area of when do you quit? When do you fold? Because <clears throat> it could be that all you need to do is just adapt and change. Yeah. Move location. Yeah. Uh, scale down. Um, and that's what a lot of business guys don't like to do. Like, they, and in some cases, they can't, right? They have to yeah. file bankruptcy, close up shop, move on. But uh, one of the things about having a small business like mine, where I'm selling, um, you know, essentially the non tangibles, I don't have product inventory, is I've had offices in suites, uh, executive suites. Uh, I've shared offices with people. Um, like there's a lot more flexibility and, and that you kind of almost need that flexibility in your church plant of being able to quickly and easily, uh, scale down, uh, scale up, move locations. Mm-hmm. Like I still remember, uh, we, we had a place out here in California called the crystal cathedral for years. You've probably seen it on TV. Uh, Robert Schuler's church. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Well, the interesting thing to me was, like, you know, I, I, do you know how many thousands that thing held? I be, I went in there when I was a kid, and the girl from um, Facts of Life, Blair, um, she went there and she sung in the choir. And my grandparents told me that, and I had a major child crush on her, so I went. Nice. Yeah. Do you know how many it held? No. Okay, well, the, the, you're not helping my question. What would you say? A couple thousand? Three thousand? Oh, five thousand? Oh, I have no yeah, idea. Thousands. I've never, I've never been to it. Oh, dude, like, I'm a Christian. So many. I'm a Christian. I've never been to it. Yeah, no, that's good. You're a good Christian. <laughs> well, because here's what my point is: like when they imploded and the whole thing crashed, and they sold it off. I believe it was uh, the Catholic Church came in and bought the the facilities. Um, his daughter went and started her own church, and she was like trying to, you know, take as many people with her. And I remember hearing that, and I have no idea what happened since, right? But when she started her church, she had to start it in a, uh, a storefront with only 100 people in it. I mean, you're going from thousands down to 100. I mean, I don't know anything about her, but I, I'm, I'm just like looking at that going, okay, what kind of ego crush is that? If you're like, hey, right. my church used to be hundreds of, you know, uh, not hundreds of thousands, but thousands of people. And and I don't know if, if the average church pastor could go through something like that. Like if they were the pastor of a mega church with 2,000 people at it and whatever happened to it, and they got to start over again with 100. I don't know if the ego could take it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was funny. I was, I was talking uh, with Mac. He was in a room uh, in a think tank on multiplication with a guy named Ralph Moore who's probably the only level five church in America, according to what, what they were saying at exponential. Um, but he has sent or planted, you know, if you consider the churches he planted are planting, they're multiplying and those are multiplying. Um, the guy introduced him by saying, and this is Ralph Moore. He's, he and his movement have planted 2,413 churches. And, and, and Ralph said, he corrected him and said, uh, that's 200, 2,417. Uh, but you know, apparently he's a really humble dude. Um, <laughs> for real, for real is a humble guy. He's just saying, no, it's actually this many, but, uh, but he's only got a church of 300 people. And, and, and he, he, the biggest church he's ever pastored has been 1300. And that's because his model has been multiplication. He has chosen to break the system. He has chosen to break out of the mold. So 300, this dude that's probably the only real multiplying movement in America has a church of 300. And that's, that's what I think people have a, a, a hard time understanding is that you, you don't need size to be a multiplication church. You need leadership. You need to be able to disciple leaders. The faster you can do that, the faster you can multiply. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were just a little church and we multiplied church planners out of our church. 
So in, the, in each one of them, we train them, make an apprentice and start getting ready to plant out of your church. And that will, that will keep you mentally and spiritually in the right mindset to be a multi- multiplication church. But yeah, I, you know, I totally, I, I agree with what you're saying there. And here's the deal, right? Um, here's some of the things that go wrong with church plants. I just want to kind of walk you through and, and what you can do about it. I was talking with a church planner yesterday who said that um, he's restarting. Um, he's going to move about a mile away. And you mentioned different locations. Sometimes that's it. You're just in the wrong spot. And if you think of Jesus being in the boat, uh, the disciples are fishing all night. He, he talks to him and says, hey, guys, cast your net on the other side. And they do. And they catch the you know so many fish that the boat starts to sink. And Peter knows this is the power of God. Sometimes God just tells you to move to another location, to go to another part of the city where the, the fish are biting or the fruit is ripe. And you need to be aware of that and, and willing to listen to that. It might be a rich neighborhood. It might be a poor neighborhood, but you need to listen to what God is saying. And uh, the other thing is, you know, you got to keep in mind that there are four soils in when Jesus talks about it, he says the sower goes out scattering the seed. You need to have the mentality, not that it's this church building or bust, this neighborhood or bust. I don't believe that that is how Paul operated, how Jesus operated, or how the parables operate. He talks about going out scattering seed in four different fields and one takes. So that's how Paul uh, begins to move. Same with Jesus. It says he goes to an area, their faith was weak. It says he could do no miracles there and he moves on. Paul does the same thing. He moves on throughout the New Testament. Um, he goes to places and we've talked, I mentioned this all the time that I've stood in cities in Turkey where Paul preached and nothing happened and he moves on. We need to have that mentality. Church planner, don't get so die hard that it's, you know, uh, mega church or bust. And when things aren't taking, people aren't getting saved, cast your net on the other side. Go to the next field and sow there. And if it takes, that's when Paul started churches. He didn't go and start a church and then wait for people to get saved. He went evangelize, people got saved, and churches happened. So we got to remember that. Um, but here, here are the things that go wrong, okay? Sometimes, um, you know, it's it's money, you know, you can't pay your bills. Money's a good thing, by the way. Money's not evil. Money's a good thing. Paying your bills, good. Uh, not paying your your bills, bad. So, and and I should just tell everyone I've done both of those, and definitely paying the bills is better. Uh, you know, I would say I've had a much more enjoyable experience when I have food to eat, and I'm doing ministry. I remember coming back my first year, so thin. Everyone thought I had this awesome diet going on. I said, "Yeah, it's the I don't eat food." And they go, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we're all trying not to eat as much food. I go, no, I don't have food to eat, man. <laughs> just looked at me like, yeah, that's not funny. You're a missionary. That's that's not. And I'm like, I'm not joking, man. I literally, third times, I remember my wife living, my wife and I living, this, these were our groceries, milk, eggs, coffee, tins of beans, and bread to make toast, baked potatoes. And that was it. That was literally our diet for a year. And, uh, and, and, you know, here's the deal. I don't suggest anyone does this, but here's the deal. Paying your bills is good and getting a job. I got a job. I went and got a job in a factory because 9-11 hit and my support dropped and I couldn't eat. So the bottom line is, guys, um, you're often church planters come to me. They say their church plant failed and I, and I ask them what's going on. They go, well, there's just no people and no money. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Your church plan didn't fail. Your finances failed. And because of that, mm. you failed. What you did is you tied your personal finances to the growth of the church. That's a big mistake, right? You need to, to keep those two things separate. So if you want to get support, get support, but get a part-time job. If you don't have enough support, always make sure you can pay your bills. Don't depend on a brand new church plan. To pay your bills. In fact, I would tell most church planners out there, guys, if the best favor I can do is tell you something you really don't want to hear, and that is don't take a dime from the church plant for the first two years. Um, if, if you just put that in your, your memory banks and tuck it away, I know you don't want to hear it, 
but it's going to be better for your church. Pour the money of your church back into your church. Number two, um, when, when all the weird people turn up or, you know, they turn into a bunch of, it, it could be just the wrong people keep coming. And I know that sounds non-PC. It could be weird people. Suddenly you're just the mentally ill church. And you're like, man, and, and <laughs> I remember Refuge Long Beach at times. I remember thinking, we need some normal people right now because we're starting to tip, tip the, the scales a bit. We definitely want to reach a marginalized, but uh, we need some normal people here. And if your church starts becoming all weird people, um, and, and all, I'm not saying that you fold down outreach and discipleship and ministry to them, but you might want to think about restarting because you're going to need a strong team of normal people who know how to minister to the marginalized. You, you just do. I, because what happens is when a family comes in and it's all weird people, they don't come back. And that might be a family in the community you're trying to reach. How sad is that? That really you just, you guys were just too weird. You just didn't have enough normal people to sustain it. <laughs> Any thoughts about this, Pete? I don't know if I should touch this one, but again, I'm just going to repeat to everyone. It's Peyton at churchplantermag.com. <laughs> That's where you can send all of your emails. I don't know, man. I mean, I totally get what you're saying. Um, but, you know, what do you do if that's what God gives you? Well, if God gives you that, keep recruiting a team of people that, like I'm saying, it, there are people where they are all need, and those are usually the strange ones. And that's okay. You want to minister to them. I'm not saying, hey, have a church of the preppy people. No, I'm a dirtbag. I'm a dirtbag by nature. I'm a dirtbag at heart. I, I get on well with homeless people. I get on well with mentally ill people. I'm a psych nurse. I get on really well with that. However, I will tell you, when you're dealing with addicts, when you're dealing with you know all that crowd, ex-cons, it is going to swamp you. And so you must start recruiting a team of capable people if you start getting there. And I, and I would suggest, like I said before, I would suggest if you can't do that, fold it down and restart, but keep ministry going to that area. But um, the other thing is your spouse. Um, and this will be the last thing I touch on because there are a lot of things that can go wrong with a church plan, but these, oh, and, 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 and by the way, I could, I can make it legalists in that list that your church is just tons of legalists. I can make it traditionalists. I can make it hyper charismatic people that want to make it all about, you know, let me, uh, I see spirits on you. I mean, it, so many things can go wrong with your church plan. It could be theology club where all people want to do is light cigars and talk about theology all the time. You're not going to reach lost people like that either. So there are times. No, but you did have me at cigars. I knew I, 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 I saw you on the video feed. Suddenly you looked at me like, oh, <laughs> you perked up a bit. But, but I like this church. That's the kind of church I'm going to do. <laughs> but, but here's the deal. Um, th those are all ways that your church can get hijacked. And you just got to simply kind of like that story I told earlier. Fold it down if you got it. Make it into prayer. That'll weed people out right there, right? Um, or simply shut it down, uh, start rebuilding a core team, and maybe even relaunch. The, the last thing, though, is your spouse. Um, your spouse might be at a point where they're like, I'm done. And if that happens, um, there's not really a lot to say about that. There's sometimes a spouse will say, hey, this is hard and I'm struggling. And at that point, you need to help them. You need to give them what, what's, what kind of break. Do we need a vacation? And during that time, I look after the kids for you so you can have a break. Um, do we need to be praying more, having quiet time? What, what is it? What is it right now where your needs aren't getting met? And you got to be honest enough to look at that. But sometimes your spouse just truly is done. And when your spouse is done, done, that means you're done. Okay. You, you do not keep trying to soldier on in a church plant where your spouse is done. Um, if your circumstance changed, would your spouse's position change? If the, if the church plant itself changed, would your spouse change? Um, that's something you have to ask and you have to explore by talking to her. But here's, here's what I say. 
if your spouse is done, um, and that, that, that can be an, a major Achilles heel. That could be because you're not bringing in money. That can be, you know, in other words, you don't have a job that's paying the bills while you're doing this church plant. Or maybe you don't have time because you didn't build a team of capable leaders. And so uh, there's, you're doing all the work. And so she doesn't have a husband. She's an evangelical widow. These are all things that if you go back through our podcast, we've tried to keep you from falling into these pitfalls. But um, when your spouse is done, that means you're done. But that doesn't mean the church is done. That doesn't mean the church plant is done. If your spouse is done, then you immediately start telling her, you know, look, I hear you and I honor you because if you ever want to have hope of planting a church again, you need to get out and you need to make her a priority. And what you do is you start replacing yourself. Then you replace yourself in time. You start having conversation. You tell her, look, in six months time, you put a date on it and you say, let's strategize towards me being out and I will be out. Right could be three months. She may not have six months to give, but you need to talk to her and you need to say, look, I will start recruiting. I'll start talking to, could be your sending church, could be uh, denominational leaders, could be other church planners in the area. You could be talking about a merger. If you had a merger, um, there's things you'd want to do. You'd want to, in fact, that would be a great one. Um, I know we talked about how to merge a church, but there's more, there's more that we could say on that. Um, So there's a lot of things that you could do and again, if you guys are listening today and you're like, hey, you know, I, this is really a lot of what we say on the podcast. For some of you guys, no one's training you, no one's teaching you. And it's it's like an oasis for you, you know. But at the same time, this really is tip of the iceberg stuff. Each one of these topics is a whole nother hour's conversation. And so what we do, without you know, we do smack have smack talk without the smack talk, without the smack talk. Although if you come to Band of Brothers call. There's a little bit of smack talk on there, but we smack talk with you. And so, uh, you know, Jump School is kind of where you go deeper. Um, Jump School is our online church planner training course. It lasts a year. You get access to Pete and I. Um, we have conversation. We talk through your particular problem. And if you want to check that out, it's jumpschooltraining.com. And you can get online. You can look that up. And uh, guys, we just really have a heart for you want to be there for you, want to help you. And uh, with that, we got one more word from our sponsor because today's podcast was also brought to you by SimplifiedChurch.com. SimplifiedChurch.com. Hey, Pete, would you say I'm a math pastor? You know, Peyton, of all the pastors I've ever met in my life, you are by far the most mathematical. (laughs) Wow. Wait a second. No, it was the reverse of that. That came out. You have absolutely no math skills whatsoever. You have no administration skills. In fact, I don't even know how you do the podcast. Like, I'm amazed sometimes that you can turn on a computer. I'm actually recording. Wait, am I recording today's call? Let me. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I am recording today's call. Um, I am not a technical guy. I am not an accounting guy. I'm not a, a website savvy guy. I'm just a guy trying to help other people plant churches. And dang it, sometimes I need some help on all that other stuff. I'm just a guy standing in front of a church asking them to love him. I'm just a boy in the world. And I need SimplifyChurch.com to help simplify what I do. So the art of church planning often is the art of delegation. Ooh, and uh, guys learn to delegate to the people that are gifted in this and simplify pull, church. Pull a Moses. Delegate. <laughs> That's right. Jethro might need to come up to you, tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, dum-dum, why are you doing all the accounting for your church? You're trying to plan a church, right? You're trying to reach a community, right? You know you're going to go stuff. to jail, right? You know the IRS <laughs> is going to come after you, right? <laughs> That's probably the best way to leave that commercial right there. Go check them out. They'll keep your IRS compliant. They'll help you do your uh, finances and make sure people get paid, including you. And uh, that's it, guys. So uh, SimplifyChurch.com and tell them Pete and Peyton sent you. And uh, what's our closing line on this one? Oh, and remember. No, that's junk school. (laughs) (laughs) You want to close us out? No, I'm trying to remember what's our line. Oh, if you want to reach the ones that no one's reaching, you need to go where no one's going and do what nobody's doing.
Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Church Planner Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Peyton Jones. We'd love to hear your comments on this episode of the Church Planner Podcast. Visit us online and let us know what you thought at churchplannerpodcast.com. If you subscribe to us via iTunes and have enjoyed the podcast, leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive in iTunes, the more iTunes will promote us to other church planners who would benefit from this show. This podcast is brought to you by the Church Planner Magazine, which is available in the iTunes newsstand or online via churchplannermagazine.com. Thank you.